How's it going guys? Welcome back to the channel. Quick video today about the 2023 Subaru Legacy and the facelift of it. I, to me, it doesn't feel like Subaru is heading in the right direction when it comes to their design. First, it was the Impreza, which I made an entire redesign video on on the Sketchmonkey channel, talking about the rear view and the front as well. But the rear specifically, it just lacks a lot of dynamics. But I thought it was so close, I just made, I made a couple of changes to the rear end of the Impreza and it turned out to be a super cool looking sedan. So what is new here with the 2023 Subaru Legacy? What we're gonna do in this video, talk a little bit about the spec and tech, but not so much because it, it's not really a lot of changes over the previous uh, pre-facelifts. And then we're gonna, of course, talk about the design changes in the front and in the rear, if Rosie can get out the way here so you can see what I'm talking about. So the new sport trim, for example, which in the previous pre-facelift version wasn't really living up to the name with its 182 horsepower naturally aspirated unit and that did 0 to 60 in 8 seconds not really sporty specifically if your name is Subaru but now what we have is a 260 horsepower 2.4 liter turbocharged and that will do 0 to 60 in about 6.1 seconds so it dropped by almost 2 seconds which is pretty cool if you want to have the sport badge on your legacy you kind of want to feel it when you're driving it as well it also has a little bit of red lipstick in the front end to differentiate from the non-sport version it also comes with gray side mirrors and a trunk spoiler gray 18 inch wheels and a black and gray two-tone cloth interior with red stitching to add that sporty feel in the interior as well and there is also a different tune on the suspension compared to the regular non-sport version on the inside if you get this uh, 2023 Legacy now with the 11.6 11, 11 inch touchscreen, you also get wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as standard, which is not bad. So when, he, when we're talking about the spec and tech, I have nothing bad to say about uh, the, the new Subaru Legacy. I think it's a cool car, but when we talk about the design, it just feels like they lost their passion over the last decade or so Subaru. The previous generation legacy that we have up here up top, it's a beautiful looking thing. It's a little slow, yes, with 182 horsepower even in the sport version, but we have a clear, for example, separation between the lower part of the front uh, front uh, graphics and the bottom part with a proper looking uh, bumper right here, as you can see. Nice looking graphic, very kind of uh, normal, I, w I wouldn't say generic maybe, borderline generic, but we still have the identity in the headlights of Subaru which is this kind of C shape that we have on on this generation Subaru and the grille is not over oversized either it looks good this thing just to add some cool wheels on it and uh, maybe uh, tune it up a little bit maybe throw in a turbo <laughs> turbo in there or something and it would be a really really good looking sedan also from the rear which we're gonna have a look at in just a second but now looking at the facelift here I feel like this is not a facelift, it's more of a face drop because this doesn't look better at all than the previous generation. But that's just my opinion and here's why because the grill now is super big they enlarged the grill by i don't know how many percent just to kind of follow a trend that everybody else is doing and since it only has the top version only has 260 horsepower i doubt that this entire surface is needed for cooling so i think if we look into this we can see that the opening is pretty much the same size as the previous grill you can see the open slots here and the rest is just covered up by plastic and i guess just a new styling feature so why why did they decide to make this grill so much bigger and what that also does now in the front end is we don't have the beautiful separation of the two uh, two uh, top and lower part of the graphics front front fascia now instead this grill just cuts into the lower part and then we have this massive chamfer around it that in my opinion i think this chamfer is too big it's too pronounced and it doesn't look that great specifically comparing it to the more subtle more a little more elegant previous pre-facelift in the bottom looking at the graphics of the headlight we now have this lipstick right here for the sport version and this bar sticking in now across out of the grill in this uh, place right here and in to the headlights themselves 
and looking at the headlight shape, the outline of it looks very organic, which is which is fine. But I think that we could have a little more definition in this and not so many curvatures all over the place. And in addition to this, in the new facelift, we now had this bar or spear sticking into the eyeball of the Subaru Legacy that we didn't have in the previous uh, pre-facelift right here. We still had the interesting outline shape of this uh, headlights. Same thing as with the new facelifted version, but it still looks a little cleaner without this spear sticking in to the eyeballs. And on, when we look down at the bottom right here with this graphics, I have no idea what this is supposed to look like or what this is supposed to connect with in the front end graphics because this seems like just a black blob that they just smacked onto the lower parts and let's make it into a couple of different angles one angle pointing this way the other one point pointing this way and maybe have a little different type of curvatures in the bottom and a different type of texture here than we have right here it's just a, a such a small surface with so much going on in it. I just don't see why that would be necessary. Going back again, I'm gonna keep going back to the pre-facelift version and how much better I think that was executed than the new one. I don't know what it is with Subaru these days. If they just lost interest in design or if they're trying to find a new design language or something like that. The BRZ looks good, but that was in a collabor collaboration with Toyota. So I can't re really give Subaru all the credit for that one. And the new Impreza, as I said. And the same goes for the Subaru out back wilderness i think it's called which looks looks like it's on stilts it skipped a lot of leg days and has tiny little wheels and massive black cladding all around the bodywork that doesn't connect to any graphic features on top of the plastic cladding. So hopefully they will find a way to solve this and really hammer in a new design language of Subaru or if they can't do that I wouldn't mind going back maybe five or six, seven years in their design history to bring back some cool design of Subaru. Now looking at the rear view, this is actually a really cool clean rear end on both of these. You can see this is a typical facelift where they actually only focus on the face because I can't see any difference here in the pre-facelift up here to the new uh, facelift version down here. This looks like it's exactly the same car, so no uh, no effort was made to, uh, to redesign or create something new in the rear end, except for, of course, we have the dual tailpipes right here, which looks pretty cool. And the previous generation or this version, this trim, I'm not sure what this is, looks like the sport version with the black wheels and the uh, little lip up here, but that even the sport version didn't have the dual exhaust up there. So that's a, I guess, a welcome addition to the new facelift. But other than that, it looks uh, pretty much identical to the pre-facelift one. Now, let's ha quickly have a look at the interior. And this is also, in, in addition to the rear view, I think this interior looks really clean, basic. It doesn't have to have more stuff than this. And what I really like about the facelift is that they kept the analog gauges right here. So we have this nice housing of the gauge cluster. And in, instead of putting in, you know, what everybody does, does these days, just slap a big iPad here that's curved or something like that to create uh, both the uh, gauge cluster and the infotainment system in both uh, in, in one screen. I definitely prefer this and I have nothing bad to say about analog tachometer and speedometer in a gauge cluster. I think that's still my preferred gauge cluster layout with a screen like they have right here in the middle. That might, might be a little old school, maybe 10 years back, but it still works for me. And here you have the 11 point, I think five inch screen or 11.6 inch screen right here with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto if you go with this option right here. So overall, I hope to see more cool designs from Subaru. They've been dropping a bunch of super cool concepts lately or or going back at least five years for example wrx has a lot of cool concepts leading up to the production version which was a complete letdown in my opinion let me know what you think about the facelifted subaru legacy Do you prefer the old or the new one comment below which one you would buy thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video